Yes, everyone, the same inmates are coming and going out of the Knox County Detention Facility. Drugs and alcohol are behind most of the crimes, leading to the overcrowding problem. The maximum number of inmates it can hold is 1036. That's 1036, but right now, 1,233 are packed into the pods. The Knox County Sheriff's Office is trying to stop that revolving door. But they can't do it alone. So every Monday here at 6, we will tell you about reentry programs and how you can help inmates in bridging the gap, learning how to stay out of trouble. This cell block at the Roger D. Wilson Detention Facility is packed with 100 inmates. It was built to hold 40. During our visit, several were yelling, trying to get our attention about the overcrowding problem. For various legal reasons, we can't show their faces. But we were able to talk with inmate Yusuf Hamed. At 28, he's been in and out of jail for years. I stole a CD player out of a car and uh, kind of got railroaded in court. I got five years in prison for it and um, didn't get probation or anything. Since then, I haven't really been able to get out of the system. Chief Steve Bravo has walked these halls for 20 years, knows each inmate's story, and is tired of seeing the same faces here for the same reasons. Addiction to drugs, alcohol, or both is part of the problem for 75% of the inmates here. We need to do something. I mean, these are, you know, th these are people that made mistakes, and, um, we need to get them on the right track. So you're saying most of these inmates can be rehabilitated? Absolutely. We need to open doors for when they get out of here. And um, the, the problem is they come in here, they stay six months. They don't have anything when they leave. Family members are tired of helping them. We have some, a few that are, you know, that are, I don't believe, are ready to get back in society at that, you know, but... Yeah. But um, it's not as many as people think. Yusuf Hamed says there is hope for him. Intensive treatment programs like this one have turned his life around. I used to drink and I used to smoke marijuana. It teaches us that you know, our problems are a lot deeper than the things we do. You know, the things that we do wrong are more of a symptom of our problem. It's definitely done a lot for me. Lieutenant Letitia Fritz is director of programs and says a lack of education is also part of the problem. At least 30% of inmates did not graduate from high school. And listen to this. You'll be surprised. We've, I've talked to some people and they don't have past the fourth grade education level. Um, today. Today fourth grade education level. Yusuf Hamid is headed for a three-year prison term soon, but hopes what he has learned here will help him one day stay out of trouble. Uh, my biggest goal is to never come back. Yeah, sighing, saying, can't come back. Yeah. Don't want to come back. You know, there is, Kristen, an immediate and desperate need for tutors to teach elementary to middle to high school levels to help inmates get those GEDs. Mm -hmm. And right now there's a waiting list. Not enough volunteers are coming in regularly to help inmates start to turn their lives around. They just can't finish it. So people who are watching who want to help out, mm -hmm. if, if they want to come in and help them get those GEDs, do they have to have a teaching certificate or certification? Obviously that is preferred and in many cases that would be best and we were thinking retired teachers. Mm -hmm. That would be perfect for you if there's something you'd like to do to, to give back. But they were also telling me uh, at the detention facility, if you love to read, if you have some uh, area of interest, history, something like that that you're really plugged mm -hmm. into, come in and mentor. It'll go a long way. It really will. Learn how you can make a difference. We have the info for you on our website, wate.com, in the As Seen On section.